Hey guys, today on JD Cars, we're gonna be straight piping my BMW 335i. So you may or may not have seen my video last week. I did a resonator delete on my 335 here. It made the car a little bit louder, a little bit more sporty, and you could hear some tiny burbles with the windows open, but it was nothing crazy whatsoever. And most people probably wouldn't even notice it. And you guys are crazy if you think I'm just gonna stop at a resonator delete. So today we'll be effectively straight piping the car by installing an electric cutout before the muffler. Also a quick note for those of you wondering, this car does have an M3 style body kit installed on it, but it is in fact a stock. BMW 335 with the N55 engine. So for the M3 conversion, I obviously did the front bumper. I did the front fenders as well, side skirts, and I did the M3 style rear bumper with a custom quad exhaust that I welded up and installed myself. So if you haven't already, be sure to check out that video as well. So I've got the car on the lift here. Let's take a look at the exhaust system. Start out in the front here. And I'm just gonna explain the exhaust here in case some of you don't know about the N55 exhaust setup. And this is gonna be applicable to a lot of cars actually. This is the basic setup for most vehicles. Coming out of the engine here, you're gonna have a really big box or cylinder. This is your catalytic converter. Its job is to clean up the car's exhaust before it gets launched out of the muffler. And it also quiets down the car a fair amount. If you remove your cat, you're gonna have a lot of exhaust smell. It's gonna make the car louder, and you will have some power gains as well. I won't be removing my cat today, so technically this isn't a straight pipe, but I probably will be doing a catless down pipe down the road. So moving back from the cat, we just have a straight pipe here, and then this is where you would have your resonator, but as I told you guys, I did a resonator delete last week. If you haven't checked out that video yet, be sure to do so. This is a really time and cost friendly mod and it does have noticeable results. Using these exhaust band clamps, it was really easy to install. You can do this in a matter of like half an hour. It came out really clean and really solid. So I'm really happy with that. And then moving back from the resonator here, we've got our muffler all the way at the back of the car. As you can see, I've modified my muffler to have quad tips for my M3 style rear bumper, but the muffler itself still functions exactly the same. And the function of the muffler is exactly what it sounds like. It's to muffle the car, to make the exhaust note very quiet. And that's exactly why we'll be bypassing it today using a QTP electric cutout. Now, as I briefly mentioned in my resonator video, this modification is gonna require dropping the exhaust here, but a bonus of this resonator delete and those exhaust clamps is I can simply unbolt my exhaust at the back end of the resonator delete pipe and I can just remove this little section of my exhaust opposed to having to remove the entire exhaust system. So that's why I did this resonator delete before doing my electric cutout. It's gonna make the job a lot easier. So I wanna give you guys a look at what I received here from QuickTime Performance. Opening up the box here, you'll see that everything is packaged very well. <laughs> Look how perfectly everything is packaged. Everything's individually packaged and protected in its own box. So I'll start off with these two boxes here because it'll allow me to explain your installation options of weld-in versus clamp-in cutouts. So we'll start off with the method I'll be using today. This is the QTP 3-inch DIY cutout. So open it up here you'll see that we have a pipe, and this pipe is specially cut at an angle here and perfectly sized to fit right onto our existing exhaust pipe. So what this is gonna allow me to do is to cut out a hole in my exhaust, the same shape as this pipe here, and I'm gonna be able to weld it in line with my existing exhaust. So it's just gonna be a very small extension off of my existing exhaust system. I'm not gonna have to cut the exhaust in two, I can just weld it right on there. And we also have an exhaust flange with a gasket and a cap in case we ever wanted to close off the cutout, as well as some hardware to secure the cap as well. So the setup will look something like this. We're gonna position our flange on the DIY cutout pipe in a position that works for us. I'll determine that once I'm over at the car, of course, and I'll weld it on here all the way around. So that's option number one. It is a bit more involved, but it's gonna work better for my situation. This is your second option for installing a QTP cutout. This is a three inch prefabricated cutout pipe. So taking a look at this here, you can see that this section of pipe that I'll be welding onto my exhaust 
has already been welded on to a straight section of pipe here. This knocks a lot of the work out of the way for you and it is an easier installation method. You essentially cut out a section of your exhaust and in place you either weld this into the exhaust or you can use exhaust band clamps as I did on my resonator delete. That's a very easy and effective option for installing a cutout like this and it requires no welding whatsoever. So these are both excellent options and each has its advantages in different situations. Now we'll be looking at the beautiful cutout itself. This is a three inch electric cutout from QTP. I'm really excited to see this. Very well packaged as with everything else. So we do have a wiring harness included with a really solid two way toggle switch here. Really good quality. It's covered with some heat shrink tubing and this connector going to the cutout here appears to be watertight. Yes it is, it has a little rubber gasket in there. So this is a watertight connector to our cutout. Really high quality and very well put together. Now to look at the cutout itself. Oh wow, wow, this thing is beautiful. This machined aluminum looks amazing, especially with the QuickTime Performance logo etched into the block there on either side. Looks awesome. And what shocks me is the weight of it. It just has a really solid feel. The electric motor is much more substantial than other cutouts out on the market. You'll notice that not only the connector is watertight, but the motor here has a watertight seal on the end, so no water will be getting in. And the motor is also sealed on the other end where the motor shaft connects to this coupler here. Next up out of the box here, we have the smallest little box here, but in this small box is a ton of functionality. This is a wireless remote control control for our electric cutout. Let's take a look at it here. So in the box here, we have the wireless controller here. This is all wired up and ready to go with a fuse installed in the power line, which is awesome to protect the car's electronics. We have two remote controls included and some instructions to get you started. Now looking at this controller and the connectors here, you'll probably notice these are different style connectors than the one on our cutout here. They're actually very different and I'll explain why. So here's that wiring harness that was included with the electric cutout. As you can see, it has the same style connector as the cutout itself, of course. And on the other end, we have this pretty standard style connector. And this is in fact the same style connector as our wireless controller here. So we'll unplug this manual toggle switch from our included cable. I'll set this aside should I need it later. And the wireless controller can plug right into this wire like so. And you'll notice that there are two connectors. So if you are equipping your vehicle with dual cutouts, you can use the same controller for two different cutouts. I really appreciate all the thought that has gone into this setup. And the last box here is a three inch adjustable turndown. I'll show you exactly what that is. So in the turndown package here, we received this really nice polished stainless steel turndown. This is an angled piece of pipe to redirect our exhaust in a safe direction away from the car so our cutout doesn't melt anything. And you'll actually notice that this flange isn't actually welded onto the turndown. The turndown does have a nice lip to make sure this is square, but QTP doesn't weld it into place because you will want the adjustability of angling this yourself to put it at the right angle for your vehicle. So again, I really appreciate the thought that has gone into this setup and how adjustable and user friendly it is. So the first step of installing our electric cutout is determining the location of the valve. I deleted my resonator so that I could put my cutout as far back as I can and to maximize the loudness. And after looking at it here, I think I'm gonna place it just before the muffler, probably in this vicinity here. So I've grabbed my DIY cutout pipe and the included three inch flange, as well as a Sharpie to mark the location of the pipe. So I'm just gonna take my pipe here and start placing it on the exhaust and see where it fits best because there are slight angles and bends in this area. So I wanna make sure that this has the tightest fit possible all the way around. So I like this location here and the reason I say to grab your flange as well is because your flange may or may not play a role in the placement of your pipe. It does play a role in my situation here because as you can see, the flange prevents the valve from being placed in this location right here because of the curvature of the pipe. So I need to make sure that my flange clears that pipe. Looks like that's as far back as I'll be able to cut it while still having a little room for my flange here. And I'm probably gonna rotate this DIY pipe just a little bit upwards so that the cutout and the valve aren't visible from the back or you know, as least visible as possible. And if you purchased one, you can also grab your turn down and begin to experiment with the angle of the turn down and how it's gonna sit and be positioned just to be as smart as possible in placing our DIY pipe here. So once you've found a location you're happy with, grab your Sharpie and you wanna mark all the way around the outside of our DIY cutout pipe. Also, as a note, it's obviously 
<laughs> impossible to mark the top edge of the DIY pipe here just because we have stuff in the way. But as long as you get a really solid marking around at least half of the pipe here, you can go ahead and remove it. And once we have the exhaust removed from the car, we can then line it up with the marks that we made and complete the tracing around the rest of the pipe. So now that we've determined the location of our cutout, we can drop the exhaust and get working on installing the valve. On my particular BMW here, the exhaust removal process is pretty easy. We just have two 13 millimeter nuts located here and one located over here. We'll remove those 13 millimeter nuts, attach to the hangers here. And then for me, because I installed this resonator here, I just have to unbolt two 18 millimeter nuts on this rear clamp to release the back half of the exhaust here. Now, if you don't have a resonator delete installed like I do, you'll have to remove this brace right here, a couple of Torx fasteners up towards the front, and one exhaust clamp connecting the exhaust to the downpipe. Oh, who the hell is this? <laughs> All right, so I just finished up tracing this with a Sharpie. As you can see, I got the outside perimeter complete and I was able to get my Sharpie in there on the inside perimeter to, I don't know, maybe about here. And then I finished the sketch around the perimeter. I only got the Sharpie like that far in, but we got the hole marked out. Obviously all this X'd out area here needs to be cut out. And it is important to keep in mind that the outer perimeter is past the edge of the pipe. So we'll wanna focus on cutting out the inner perimeter line, which is why I continued it and sketched it out all the way around here. It's entirely up to you how you wanna cut this out. I just picked up some cutting discs for my die grinder as well as a carbide burr. I saw QuickTime Performance using one of these on their website for an install and it looks like a very helpful tool. I'll have links to both of these down in the description below. Wow, this came out way better than expected thanks to this carbide burr. I actually hadn't even heard of one of these before. I was just browsing the QTP site, saw them using it in an install picture, and I asked them, what is that attachment on your angle grinder? And they told me it was a carbide burr, and these little guys are pretty expensive. They're like 30 bucks for one, but they're definitely well worth it. My rounded edges and corners came out phenomenal. This thing really allows you to be precise in working in tight areas and it really chews up the metal as you can see there. I definitely highly recommend picking one of these up. In case you didn't see there, I used my angle grinder to make most of the cuts and I just cut the corners like that, leaving a lot of excess material in this area here. That carbide burr ripped right through it and placing the DIY cutout pipe on here. It's difficult for me to show you, but you can see the edge there. I'm very happy with the fitment. So I'm gonna throw a wire brush on my die grinder and clean up the pipe around here in preparation for welding. So I was about to weld up our DIY cutout pipe to my exhaust pipe here, but I remembered the flange. We gotta position the flange and get it welded up preferably before welding on the DIY pipe here. So I have my exhaust on some jack stands level here. Can basically simulate it being on the car. So I'm gonna get our flange positioned on here and angled how I want it. Then I'll tack it up, remove my masking tape, bring the pipe over to my welding cart and complete the weld all the way around the edge. And then I'll be ready to install it on the exhaust system here by tacking on the corners and then welding all the way around.
So while we wait for that paint to dry, we can get going on wiring up our wireless controller. Scoped out the wiring situation in the trunk here, and I think it's gonna work out absolutely perfectly. The first step, we'll be using a 10 millimeter socket here to remove this small plastic 10 millimeter nut retaining in this fuse panel. Then you can lift this up, it'll hinge, and you can remove it like so. And the beauty of the setup is, aside from having power right here that we're gonna tap into on this board, and a nice ground right here, hidden below this fuse box is this little plastic rubber grommet, which provides us with an excellent location to feed a wire right through under the car to our electric cutout. So I'm gonna use a little flathead here to pop out that grommet and pull it out of the car so we can work with it a little more easily. So now we have to make a hole in this grommet big enough to feed through this connector for our cutout. Pop the rubber grommet right on over the connector here. Now we can bring this back over to the car. We're gonna take this connector, feed it back through this hole, reinstall the grommet, and there we go. There's also plenty of room under there to leave all that extra cable. So I'll leave that under there coiled up and we'll leave this connector hanging out. I'm not gonna bolt this panel back in yet because I will need to zip tie the excess so that it doesn't just fall out of the car. But we'll wait until we do that after we have the valve installed and plugged in. So we can just tuck this back on here for the time being. Now it's time to install our wireless controller. So the negative cable here will be grounding to a little stud over there. So I'm gonna be using this little terminal ring connector. Pop it on there and crimp it on. And now for our positive cable here, we're gonna need quite a bit of excess, so I'm gonna strip back, I don't know, maybe an inch or so. And I'll explain why we need this slack. We'll be wrapping this wire around one of the blades of this fuse, and we'll be inserting it into this socket right here on the end. As you can see, it's not occupied by anything, and I looked on the fuse chart located right here if you wanna check it out yourself. And that fuse is actually not used for anything. I used my voltmeter here to check and it is a constant 12 volt power source. And I also verified that these locations here are both strong ground points. So that will work out beautifully for our control box. I'm gonna mount mine up using some 3M tape here. And I found that it fits really nicely right on the end of this fuse panel here. So I'll get that secured and then we'll get going with wiring it up. Okay, I have my control box affixed here with some 3M adhesive. It's not going anywhere. Now I'm gonna use this 10 millimeter socket to loosen up this nut right here. Now we can take this terminal ring with our negative wire and slip it right under the nut, like so. Now I can tighten it back down. Now for the positive connection here, I'm gonna take the positive cable and I'm going to wrap this wire around one of the blades like so. And we'll insert this fuse right on the end, right like that. Cable's nice and secure, and we can tuck it in behind the fuse panel. Now all that's left to do is to plug in our valve wire here, like so. And we can tuck this in as well. I'll still have to come back and zip tie that huge coil of extra cable, but guys, look at how clean this wiring setup is. Hardly noticeable that it was even installed. Just have that box over there. All the cables tucked in underneath. I could not be happier with this wiring setup. Worked out perfectly. So by now, our paint is plenty dry. I'm gonna peel off this masking tape. And I was just thinking, oh, I still need to weld the turn down. But actually, because of this lip here, you don't have to weld this. You can just cinch down this three inch flange over the turn down to secure it and that way it remains adjustable. So let's get the car back in here, get the exhaust reinstalled and we'll get this beautiful electric valve installed on the car. All right, the exhaust is reinstalled on the car here. Now we can finally install our electric valve. Here's the order that everything's gonna be installed in. We're first gonna install this gasket here, then the valve, and then our turn down using the included hardware, a 14 millimeter socket and a 14 millimeter box wrench. All right, so we're looking good here. All we have to do now is position our turn down in the orientation that we prefer before tightening down these 14 millimeter nuts and bolts. She's all bolted up here. Let's hook it up to the cable and see if it works. Here we go. 
Oh yeah. That's sweet. Love it. All right, so I'm gonna get this cable neatened up here with some zip ties, and then I'll neaten up that coil of cables in the trunk there that I was talking about earlier. Get this thing down on the ground, and I'll show you what it sounds like. Guys, I think this sounds absolutely sick. The install was super clean. I'm very happy with both the position of the cutout and how clean all the wiring and control box work came out. The valve is working perfectly. It is pretty damn loud, I'm not gonna lie, but it's probably still not loud enough for me. I'm probably gonna do a catless downpipe down the road just to make this thing as loud as possible, but this will keep me plenty satisfied for a while. Sounds super good on acceleration, and the exhaust does burble on downshifts. It sounds awesome. I really couldn't be happier. And yes, I know, my car is dirty. I need to wash it, but yeah, I'm super stoked with how this came out. Be sure to check out the links below to this valve setup and other valve setups offered by QuickTime Performance. QuickTime Performance is the best electric valve company out there. Everything's made here in the USA and New Jersey. The quality is excellent, superior to all those Chinese valves out there. Don't even waste your money on them. This is definitely the way to go. And with that, that's gonna wrap up this video. Please smash that like button. It really helps us out with these projects. Comment down below whether you think I should go catless or high flow cats. And be sure to subscribe for more BMW content. Thanks for watching guys, and I'll see you next time on JD Cars.